waiting for uh, Monk to get back from the coffee break, but we will be moving into the uh, losers match here with Let Me Farm and, versus Firebat. So Firebat, of course, was one of the invitational players. He lost his first series to Oskaka in a really, really close series. Um, and so this means they're not out yet. The person who wins this series will move to the decider match, and they will face um, Oskaka, who lost against Suki Fan for the final position in the semifinals. So it means the players in these matches have to win the next two series in a row to advance. And if they are knocked out here, then they're done for the tournament. They get um, some small amount of Geico points and... I think they might get one world championship point, but um, no, the future tournament doesn't give world championship points, but still, Geico points, money, yeah. money is the big thing. That's pretty important. Um, and you know, let me farm. He played in the second match of the day, but we didn't really get to see too much of him because he kind of got three would unfortunately. Yeah. So he's bringing Warrior. Druid and Rogue as his lineup. Is that correct? Yeah, yep. that's right. Okay, so how is this going to match up? I feel like the the Freeze Mage versus um, Warrior and Druid are going to be a little difficult. Um, but he, de he definitely can get a win from the Rogue. So it's going to be up to um, Let Me Farm to get a win off of that Rogue pretty fast, I feel. Yep. Um, I really like that he chose the Druid first and not the Rogue. That would be something that uh, did not work out well for him, whereas his Druid matches up well against pretty much every aspect of Firebat's lineup. So, yeah. I've seen recently, though, um, Sylva like I think two months ago, Sylvanas was an auto-include an auto in Druid, but more and more recently these days, Sylvanas is being cut. And I think these days, it's more common not to have a Sylvanas than to have Sylvanas in the Druid decks. Oh man, I think uh, let me farm. You know, he's feeling a bit of the pressure, but he can still totally take it back. So I'm hoping that he he takes a, a bit of a chill pill here, warms up to what he's playing against. He did just miss attacking there into the armor of Firebat, missing one damage. Not an enormous difference, but you never want to make those silly mistakes right at the start of the game. So mm -hmm. it would be uh, like let me farm had a pretty unfortunate series against Suki Fan, so I can understand that he might be frustrated at this point and. I just hope that he keeps his cool and we see some good plays because I think he's a really good player. Yeah. Just a fraud thing coming out down the board blind. Um, yeah, you can kind of do this as in this matchup because the fraud things can like get a lot of chip damage in, whereas it's it's more of the patrons that are your win condition in this matchup as opposed to against Handlock where the fraud berserker is your win condition. Mm. I think he has to play Ancient Allure here. He could technically play... Sylvanas, but uh, having saved the Innervate this long, saving Innervate for one more turn, ugh, this this feels so gross because Innervate loses its value the later the game goes, and he's he had technically a pretty good Druid hand, and it's just never materialized into any board presence yet. It's going to be a four set of patrons here. Yeah, quite strange. It it does feel like. Actually, if you played Ancient of Lore, uh, he would have gotten wrecked by the same exact play, actually. Uh, yeah, he would have, but he would have drawn some cards. <laughs> so That's true. That's a good cards point. Cards are always nice. I think playing the Innervate Sylvanas on the turn where Firebat had an Acolyte, he was a little nervous about the Acolyte getting out of control. Okay, he does make at least a pretty good use of the Innervate here to stabilize the board more than it was. Sylvanas is a nightmare to deal with as a patron warrior in this position. Yeah. Uh, the general criticism with Sylvanas is that it's too slow, it gets silenced, but against this particular board, it's quite all right. Although, like, sometimes, like, if it's later in the game, for instance, um, sometimes the patron warrior can just burst you out of the game if you just throw Sylvanas on the board. I think I, like, slam into Battle Rage here, personally. One slam, nice thing... Slam one of your patrons, right? Yeah, yeah. One nice thing about this is if your weapon was to get destroyed, you're still getting the Whirlwind. So presumably, you know, a Harrison or an Ooze would come down and then you would just end up with six patrons, which means that you wouldn't get punished for losing the Death Bite. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I think 
Lemmy Farr is going to fall into a trap of playing the Ancient of War, and he's just going to look die. So does he actually die? He, he doesn't necessarily die, but it's going to be a huge blow. Yeah. Uh, a th three mana for a seven mana turn, uh, more damage to face, and also if he draws a like a Warsaw Commander in future turns, he's pretty much going to die. Hmm. Yeah, this is really bad. The Sylvanas will at least um, be able to steal something away here that gives a bit of potential, but... Do we see a war song? I guess not. So you end up running Sylvanas into the armor smith, and you steal a three health patron, but the swipe still wouldn't clear. You could do Savage Roar and swipe. If you stole a 3 health patron, that would end with you having a 3 health patron and the warrior has none. So there's uh, potentially a pretty good play here for Let Me Farm. Fireback can kind of counteract that by playing an Armorsmith, though. Um, it might be more relevant to... Well, actually, what Fireback can do is, yeah, trade here and then mm. War Axe the remaining patron. Yeah. And he, he actually gets that. Um... Okay, he's going to trade here, actually. Oh, he already attacked with the Death Bite that turn, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, getting the three health patron was really important. That was smart by Firebat because uh, if it had been left to Let Me Farm's decision, then it could have been worse for him, but. This still uh, gives pretty good potential. You innervate out the Sledge Belcher. You're at 9 health, but Warrior has nothing on the board, so you recovered from the opening at least. Yeah, and you're not too afraid of just a Warsong uh, patron and then inner rage combo to deal with the Sledge Belcher. It's just not that common. Emperor well, I, is going to be... The Emperor from the Warrior next turn will be really hard to deal with if you have a Sledge Belcher and then he has the... Not only the Emperor is hard to kill, but he's made his hand better, so... Yeah. Uh, what will end up happening is possibly a Savage Roar from Let Me Farm in order to kill an Emperor, which feels really, really bad. Yeah. Oh, not playing the Emperor. Yeah, you, I don't think this hand is that amazing for Emperor, to be honest. Yeah. I agree. I think uh, it doesn't do much. It would just buff the Frothing and maybe a Battle Rage. But it matched up well versus Sludge Belcher. It's just a unit. Could have gone for one shield block in Harrison as well. I think with the the rationale behind two shield blocks is that you want to dig more, so you have better um, targets for the Emperor. Whereas if you just Emperor a shield block, it doesn't feel as good. Well, he knows he's not dead here, and that uh, he has some time to play around with. Also, just digging further into the war song is really nice. I have seen games before where it seems like the patron is in a dominating position, but the war song commanders are just both in the bottom two cards of the deck. Yep. Yeah, that definitely happens. That you can just have an awesome hand like this hand is really awesome. And everything's going to cost no mana, but if you don't have charge with it, it's not useful to you at all. Mm. He's, uh, even if he drew combo, he's a ways off lethal. Combo would be 24 damage, and Firebat's at 38 health. He needs to find 14-ish damage somewhere along the way. Quite a few plays for the Druid. You gotta choose between. Oh, he trades away the ooze too, just because he doesn't want to let the patron propagate. Oh, I'm not sure I like healing. It feels like almost way too defensive of a play. If you're gonna heal, you might as well draw your card with wild growth first, right? So okay. Max. Max HP. Um, I'm not sure if there was any specific calculation behind that. In a lot of cases, you just saw him emperor the hand, so there are like 
a huge amount of combinations that would kill you regardless of if you had 10 or 16 health. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It, it does seem like you want to get out of range of a simple um, death spite weapon, but then after that there's like a whole range of um, of damage that your opponent could do that it's hard to really play around. 10 versus 14, I'm not sure it makes that huge of a difference. Well, he's still alive at least, and uh, there are no activators for Firebad, so even if he picked up Charge here, it wouldn't be very useful to him. Mm. I think I might have considered um, throwing down the Emperor last turn as well, because it, it the Emperor yeah. almost acts like a pseudo-taunt, whereas right here, like, you're just, again, you're just playing so defensively. Yeah. I agree. I think the Emperor would have been a good pick last turn, but we can see both hands. I can't really blame him for playing safe when he was at such an opening disadvantage. You don't want to like let that slip away accidentally. He's just not putting on any pressure, though. And he has combo, too, so... Um, why did he... He did that badly, right? He could have had a 5-4 here instead of a 4-3. He could have traded oh, yeah. the Druid of the Claw into Harrison and use the Ancient Allure to kill the Armorsmith, it'd be the same outcome, but he'd have a 1-1 one, one better creature, and it wouldn't have died to the War Axe. Yeah, so quite significant here. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really bad misplay. And yeah, I'm really hoping he goes for the Emperor here. He's been taking extremely defensive lines. At this point, you've seen like he doesn't have what he needs, right? So... You gotta attempt some bigger moves. Still waiting on the war song. I didn't even see what that was. Whoa! Oh, that's a cool tech card. Yeah, something. Uh, wow, I don't believe that. Really unusual tech choice in a patron warrior to see Lofeb. Um, certainly yeah. picking that for specific tournament matchups. Doesn't make a huge difference in this case for the druid, though. Well. Um, what do you think about this play? Playing the Dr. Boom, I, I think this was a good play. Uh, not playing BGH, I don't agree with. I think you should have played BGH there. But uh, the True to the Claw doesn't die to the weapon, so it can be pretty tough to deal with. Whirlwind, an absolutely amazing draw. Allows him to kill the Druid of the Claw, essentially with just the weapon, and he's going to get the extra two patrons. Yeah, We were kind of talking about Warsong Commander being the huge draw here, but patron is, works just as well. Does it, though? Uh, he's only got Frothing left, and you can clear the board with the combo here. Druid will remain at 12 health. And can, we see, can we see how many cards the uh, Firebat has right now? We've got a slight mouse over. Four cards. So, I, like we were talking about, this wow. is one of those games where the, <laughs> the War Song is in the bottom two cards. Yeah. Or the bottom four cards, at least. Both war songs are in the bottom four cards. Wait, what do you think about... Oh, okay, I like that play. What do you think about using another Inner Rage? Or is it just too much? I like having the board with one less than max creatures most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, can he still clear here? It doesn't need to die, at least. He could prevent his death. Yes, he can clear. Uh, Force of Nature, Savage War, and Wrath is a full clear, amazingly. Uh, except, except for yeah, except for the Taskmaster. But you're not really too threatened by that. I guess you you deal like five damage to yourself. Should have Wrath for one first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are seeing like quite a few miss sequences. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure what you think about at this point. There's no reason not to Wrath for one. You could throw the BGH down again. Yeah, I don't think I mind just throwing the BGH down. 
Okay, uh, well, max damage is pretty low from Firebat here. Unstable Ghoul helps a lot. Still waiting on those War Songs. Both War Song Commanders. How fitting. You, you've you made some really good predictions today so far, Monk. Unintentionally, even. <laughs> yeah, but... completely unintentionally. Always <laughs> lucky. Uh, if he picks up the War Song, it looks like the game is over. So they would have to both be the exact last card. There's no way to reduce any damage here. Yeah, I really hope Let Me Farm is keeping track of the cards that Firebat has drawn and used. Because he could like make some pretty good predictions here. Like he knows there's only one frothing left. Oh yes, not playing a creature here is actually the move, right? That's that's actually the move. And would it? And so the frothing would have five, seven, nine. It looks like yeah, he would he would survive with one health left. But if you never play a creature, yeah, it feels like that two two will kill you over the course of like. Eight turns or something. Yeah. Oh, it would it would essentially just kill him next turn. He would get one more chance to draw something. In this case, uh, Firebat has to have the War Song being the absolute last card. Okay, there it is. It's not. He finally finds one of his War Songs, and he, he's going to take a win here. Uh, there was definitely some other plays. Losing the Drew to the Claw for free when he could have had an Ancient Allure that was unkillable was a really big difference this game. Yeah. Definitely a few missteps from Let Me Farm in the series so far. Firebat just showing off how much damage you can do. It's not that not much overkill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that was that was really close. Like to come down to only five damage was uh the the game had looked horrible for Let Me Farm right at the outset when Firebat had patron inner rage uh coin whirlwind, but yeah. it just didn't it, it, uh it was pretty amazing how well he came back, and it had to do mostly because of the Sylvanas. I was t talking about how Sylvanas was being phased out, but this seems to be an argument for Sylvanas. That being said, it's pretty rare to get a Sylvanas that early uh, against the patron board. It's like you had to go through like very specific circumstances. Uh, there were a lot of choices made in a match that long, though. I'm sure that's something that like Let Me Farm should... Hopefully go back to the VOD, and it, it can be frustrating to look at a VOD where you lost, but that's something that I think he could see. Probably that was not his average performance. That was like his tournament performance under some pressure, and that he should look out for those like little sequencing errors more in the future. Mm -hmm. Just the pressure of playing a really big name like Firebat can throw you off quite a bit. Yeah. So it's going to be Face Hunter versus Patron. What do you think about the Death Spike keep? Keep oh, yeah, or I not mean, keep? I, I think I keep Death Spike in every single match. Yeah, fair enough. The Whirlwind especially is really powerful in this matchup. So, um, so typically, I, typically I give a small advantage to the Patron Warrior here. But yeah, I like how you give a small advantage because I definitely don't think it's a huge advantage for either player. Um, in broadcast the game, it's actually slightly favored towards the face hunter. But just in like, I, I I've heard every pro tell me that in practice it actually favors the uh, the patron by slight a uh, slight margin. Yeah, this is a match where the patron warrior feels like once you get any patrons down, you win. Like you even if you get just one patron on the board, the the hunter doesn't have anything that they want to deal with that with and. They're stuck trading for creatures, which eventually you'll overcome them with your better cards. Yeah, but the real problem is if you can get a patron board down, um, that usually takes up something like five or six mana on that turn, and that's five or six mana that's not devoted to staying alive. Yep. So, um, if there's only two traps in Firebat's deck, He's going to be in a really tough spot. That might be the case, and that's why he didn't play the Mad Scientist, because if it drew no trap, that would tell Let Me Farm everything about what he's up against. Yeah. I think it's almost certain that there's only two types of traps in his deck. Oh, uh, yeah. You typically don't have Freezing Trap in, in, a, in a face deck, basically. It's kind of weird to play the Explosive here, um, because there was nothing on the board, and... You could get punished by certain mechanics. The Acolyte of Pain being a good example where it'll draw an extra card. I feel like the Acolyte of Pain would have mm. eventually gotten something, though. Uh, 
I mean, animal companion steady shot, animal companion silence would also work. Be very surprised if he doesn't play the animal though. It's like the one odd number in the hand to make the mana curve work better. Yeah, all about uh, curving out really well in this matchup. Wow. We can huh. say that the animal companion would die to the weapon attack. Yeah, again the same philosophy. Both players are reluctant to either play into the, the death spite or use the death spite because I think let me farm knows that as soon as he uses this weapon, a flurry of uh, beasts will come out, both literally and figuratively. This is a patron turn, right? If you had patron here, boy, it would be glorious. You would clear the board and you would get two patrons up. Yeah, two is often the, the exact number that you need. I've noticed that, in, for example, in some matchups like Patron versus Freeze Mage, the Patron Warrior, just, they just like throw up two Patrons instead of like going against the whole board. And it just has to do with, for example, Freeze Mage. It doesn't really have any way to deal with two Patrons besides two Frostbolts. I wonder what he's saving the Animal Companion for. Uh, the other Animal Companions are not very useful other than Huffer, but Huffer would be really spectacular on a turn like this. I guess it wouldn't be that good. He could still trade into it with the Acolyte, and then the Whirlwind would pick up the damage. <clears throat> this seems very winnable for Let Me Farm, though, if he's uh, patient about it and he picks up one more Armorsmith. Hey, he has drawn a lot of cards. Both his Acolytes were thrown onto the field, Did even he have though the... one got Sciences immediately. He didn't have the patron before battle raging, right? Because that would have been a huge miss. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. That's a good play. So, do you actually have to quick, quick shot this? This seems pretty dangerous. I don't know. Quick shot's really that greedy card that you want to hang on to until you have nothing else left for maximum damage. Um, if the frothing attacks the explosive, then it would die to the whirlwind from the weapon after. So it kind of dies on its own. Yeah. It's alright. Leoc would have been terrible. So, huh, that's interesting. Grom in the stack. Um, that's quite important here, actually. Even though it's not going to be uh, very impactful in this matchup, if it ever gets to the point where Firebat has to play Freeze Mage versus Grom, yep. um, it'll be pretty good. Like, I know in the Archon Team League where um, in the last week, Liquid, we predicted that our opponents would play Freeze Mage, so we added a Grom in our Warrior deck. I think it's okay in this match, just for the extra 10 damage punch, but most of the time you want Grom for the high health creature, and the hunter's never going to bother to kill that. How long has this Death Bite been sitting there? Oh man, the Death Bite has been in the game since like turn 3 when he coined it out, and he's had the second Death Bite. Yeah, I mean it's doing a really good job, just threatening an attack, so... Uh, I feel like uh, because it's threatening these attacks, Firebat can't play optimally or as, as optimally as he would like. Getting real close. Um, you want to armor every turn, so I kind of like patron, attack, face, and execute, and then armor up. And then next turn you would do death bite again, armor up, and you would have lethal on the third turn. If he skips armoring, he could set up lethal for next turn with the charge patron and then uh, attacking because he would get the extra two patrons by bonusing one off the hound. The real dilemma for him is he doesn't have armor smiths or uh, shield blocks in his hand. 
So he's gonna be he's gonna be playing pretty scared from now on. Mm, this might be a rope turn. Uh, he's definitely not gonna get at least one of the sets of patrons off here. Hopefully, he at least traded with the juggler. Yeah, the juggler is so dangerous now. All right, so he got. He missed one. Yeah, he missed the last one. Pretty close. Still uh, lethal for next turn, right? It's 11 plus the death bite. No traps left, so mad scientist completely useless. Yeah, in fact, uh, well, it's useless, but he might just have to go for the quick shot. Yeah. I think he yeah. has to kill the Warsong commander or he dies. He could, uh, Lemmy Farm could do Death's Bite and then equip the War Axe over top to get a Whirlwind effect. Okay, just play everything out. Oh wow, going for a defensive play here. He needed to kill the Warsong commander though. Oh, maybe he, he chose to do that as well. Okay. Well, ah, the Armor Smith. It's about time you showed up, Armor Smith. Yeah, it's kind of like the key card that locks this game out somewhat. No, no real way to deal with the armor smith either. I mean, you can wolf rider into the armor smith. But when's the last time, Hot Form, that you won a game by wolf riding into an armor smith? Yeah, you don't. Uh, when they get that late game armor smith, it's pretty much over. I think Fireback could have waited for a quick shot draw, and there technically might have been like a quick shot into Arcane Golem there that would win the game. But uh, it's really pretty hopeless at that point. Yeah, Firebat doesn't seem like the type of guy, or he doesn't strike me as the type of guy who would wait in order to see the last cards. If you're familiar with StarCraft, he doesn't really do the fantasy GG timing. In fact, I've seen him just like concede um, games when he realizes, oh, I'm playing Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior, and my, my hand is not that great. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the chance was like way less than 1% that he would manage to quick shot into the one Arcane Golem, but was... Uh... Uh, so, that ties up the series, right? 1-1? One one? Yeah. And I, yeah. I want to point out that Firebat is 0-3 so far with this face under deck. So he might be regretting his choice to bring it in this tournament. Yeah, that's true. If he loses this one with the face hunter, uh, I think that's definitely going to put the pressure on. It's a pretty good hand from the Druid as well. So, question here. What's he trying to, like, why not Mad Scientist on the opening hand? Is he baiting out this keeper? Is he baiting out no. the silence? It's actually a good question uh, because he doesn't have a juggler. Like if he had a juggler, then the creeper's way better. But the scientist puts on more immediate pressure. I guess the scientist dies to wrath, and you want to make sure that you keep something on the board so you don't want to lose it to the turn two wrath. Yeah, but if even if you like quote unquote lose it to the turn two wrath, I mean. Oh, that's again really interesting. He uh, he's deciding not to play the scientist yet again. But I was as I was saying, like even if you don't want to lose it to the turn two wrath, like even if wrath happens, you're essentially just losing one damage. Where whereas uh, compared to like if you played the hunter creeper instead. Well, I mean, like losing one damage on the very next turn is different than keeping something on the board because the druid has trouble taking care of everything all at once. This seems like a pretty easy swipe. There's not a lot of bigger things to swipe. You could mm -hmm. technically keep her here, but that seems way worse. Um, it's, yeah, it seems like an easy swipe, but I think the question here is uh, wh what do you attack? Do you test your traps here before? Do you test after? Uh, yeah, he just missed four damage, so... And let me farm. Take your time, my good sir. Yeah. He should have attacked with the big game hunter first, and four damage in a match like this is enormous. Like, you can't be... Yeah, especially because a lot of the time you feel like this match, uh, this matchup comes down to a race. 
where yeah. like it's up to like the force of nature savage roar or even just the savage roar at the end to finish it off. Twenty five health is way different than twenty nine health uh, in terms of combo potential, in terms of one extra spell into a single creature lethal combo. Still, the druid's hand is uh, pretty solid, so wouldn't surprise me if he can take the game despite some small errors like that. Taunt comes into play, immediately silenced. It's interesting that Firebat appeared to make that choice uh, just a steady shot before totally deciding. Yeah. Firebat's going to be a little unhappy here, though, with the second big taunt. Yeah. So it's really draw the second owl or bust at this point. Um, sometimes you see Face Hunter with a Hunter's Mark, which would be great, but yeah, we haven't seen one at all from Firebat. Face Hunter with Hunter's Mark. I haven't seen a Hunter's Mark in Face Hunter since like the early days when Face Hunter f just came around. Yeah, maybe I'm too jaded on hunters. I just assume every hunter has good hunter cards. Yeah, every hunter has exactly the right cards he needs to kill you. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Uh, well, there's, there's really nothing here. You can't get by the taunt, and there's a heal in hand as well for let me farm, so... Technically, you could kill the taunt this turn, actually. If you unleash the hounds, kill command it, trade every hound plus the leopard gnome into the taunt, would remove it. Feels do you bad. Have any, yeah, do you have any better ways? Yeah, I, or you're waiting for the silence. To, to be honest, at this point, I feel like waiting for the silence is even better. Or just not as... It doesn't feel like you'd like just lose the game completely. Although... Right. There is a lot of damage on board. Well, I like this from Let Me Farm. Just heal, hit him in the face. Uh, you could trade for at least one hound, but you want to put in 10 damage just to face. Is there any two card combination that doesn't involve quick shots um, for uh, Firebat no, to win? There's no way to do it for that much mana. This, he would have to prevent his death, is the only move. Yeah, so Let Me Farm, even though we've kind of cr criticized some of his plays in his past few series, he's going to be up 2-1 against the challenger, or rather the champion Firebat. Yeah, uh, yeah, his deck choices worked out really impeccably there to take games. And now Rogue versus the Freeze Mage is really difficult. But Rogue versus the Hunter, we've seen Firebat lose already in that matchup, so... I'm glad to see the Firebat did not just pick the Hunter right away again. It doesn't make a huge difference because he has to win with both decks, but there's always the mental edge of, I don't want to pick the deck I just lost yeah. uh, something like four times in a row with now. Yeah, not only that, but he's already won this matchup before. Uh, not against Let Me Farm, but against Oskaka, who is widely regarded as a slightly better player. I think Oskaka's deck was also uh, teched a little nicely for Freeze Mage with a double heal bot, but mm -hmm. Firebat didn't even bother to try to kill him in that match, just went for the board clears. Yeah, I mean, you could argue if it was text for Freeze Mage. Um, I was arguing that before. I don't really think like double heal bot is amazing versus Freeze Mage. I I'd almost rather have a, a Shredder instead of the second heal bot, just to put more pressure on. Yeah, I can I see that. I find it very rare where like, I feel like the rogue would have to draw badly in order for the heals to matter that much. Because the rogue does put on a decent amount of pressure on the freeze mage. Yeah, I agree that uh, because the heal bot's like a defensive play, but you're not going to defend and win against a freeze mage. You need to attack and win. So it would be like only useful if the freeze mage all end you, which seems very counter to Firebat's style. Yeah, it it's... It's kind of like my philosophy where against uh, if you're the druid playing a freeze mage, you want to be using your lures mainly to draw cards, to dig deeper into your deck to combos and such, instead of using it to defensively heal. 
Well, not putting on a whole lot of pressure yet. Firebat just has a bunch of damage, but he seems content to kill each of these creatures single-handedly. Hmm. Maximum use of mana there. Would be uh, really weak to an Earthen Ring Farseer. I don't think he cares too much. Hmm. Yeah, well, he does set up this play. And I guess you throw down your two drops. Earthering Farseer also isn't that common. Um, it's usually you, you play it as a one of, but some players have even cut that one card. Yep. I think uh, it kind of came back as a replacement for Van Cleef, which was really popular for a long time. We still see Van Cleef sometimes, but uh, just because of all the aggressive decks that were around, rogues were yeah. more interested in having a bit of extra health gain instead. Yeah. Um, one other rationale is that possibly Van Cleef is kind of your, one of your big win conditions against Control Warrior, but you don't see Control Warrior as much. Really? How's it a win? I would say it's a win condition in a match like this, where if you oh, yeah. get a, a 10 that's 10 a or larger. That's a good point as well. Like, um, it's just that I feel like all the games where I've seen Rogue beat Control Warrior, the, uh, it's because of a huge Van Cleef. Yeah. Control Warrior seems like they have a good number of answers with the executes, but uh, it's definitely a strong unit in like a later game fight when you can set up that multi-card combo for a high mana cost. Yeah, Edwin Van Cleef is another example of um, how it's almost better to, or it's probably better to be aggressive rather than to be defensive in this matchup. I do feel like you'd rather have an Edwin in your deck rather than You'd rather have Edwin in your deck rather than Farseer in this matchup, for instance. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. Well, Firebat's been uh, doing a good job of killing everything, and with a Flame Strike, he's going to kill even more stuff. So, let me farm looking for a sprint. He does have the Thalnos at least to get him an extra card. Barely denting the Freeze Mage after all this punishment. He's only put in three actual damage. Yeah. And not only that, like, Flame Strike is not, like, it's completely optional here. Oh, wow. Drawing both Frost Novas. He can throw the Doomsayer out, have it get sapped, play another Frost Nova Doomsayer, have that somehow removed, and still clear the board. And it uh, kind of forces the Rogue to play more creatures in because. It feels like for Let Me Farm, you want to prevent that and try to keep your board alive. I hope that he won't remove it, but then you're committing to this current board and you're not going to plan to save stuff for later. Oh, well, there's the second flame strike. Uh, you don't even, yeah. The options are pretty open for Firebat here. I. Um, I like using the flame strike uh, simply because I you have the second one, and also I value the frost nova a bit more. It Ugh. just seems. Oh. Why why play the doomsayer? That was a really strange doomsayer to me. I guess he knows that it could die later to the weapon attack, but mm -hmm. I don't see him Alex Drazing, let me farm because. He's used up all of his damage to kill creatures at this point. Like, if if he had a lot of damage and he was going to Alex Straza let me farm, then it would be a great play because you're kind of eliminating removal from the rogue or you're preventing him from playing into the board. But Yeah, well, Alex is still a pretty huge threat that you have to invest damage into, so I don't feel it's that bad. And it actually turned out pretty well. You force your opponent to use his second sap in order to yep. deal with this Doomsayer. And now you know there's no more saps on the board. Or yeah. in your opponent's hand. That actually ended up being a really perfect play for Firebat. Yeah, N not only that, but you've seen your opponent use um, like an Eviscerate to face. So it's way more likely. And also, you've seen both saps. So it's way more likely for Frost of a Doomsayer to work at this point. Yet again, though, um, I'm not sure he's going to play it. 
Like, Flame Strike is an actual consideration here. I like the, uh, the Emperor kind of myself. I mean, so, why not? It's a, it's a bit scary because you could end up getting smoked by something. But you would still have the Alexstrasza, and then the Emperor has to be dealt with as well. It would be like a second oil flurry was the counterplay to that, I think. Is this the second sprint? or No, it's the first sprint here, but uh, it's a, kind of a double-edged sword as Let Me Farm dig, digs deeper into his deck, into Oblivion. I think that was the second sprint, yeah. Okay, second it's, sprint. There's really like five or six cards left in the deck. Hmm, a lot you, of damage. You can backstab, eviscerate, and feel really bad about it. <laughs> That's well put. Uh, you could do the Deadly Poison Flurry as well, that would kill the Doomsayer. Mm, the Deckhand? Ooh. Wait. Alright. Uh, okay. That's also pretty fair. I didn't think about it, but it makes sense considering um, Let Me Farm eviscerated previously onto Firebat's face. Yeah, he's, he's going with a very consistent strategy of, I just want to do all of my damage to face and see if he has enough healing in this deck. Oh, that's a really nice play. He's just trying to get Loot Hoarder out. He's just trying to draw one more card for Emperor to reuse. Hopefully it was going to be an um, Archmage Antonize. Even a Fireball would have been nice. I feel like we've seen the coin sitting in a lot of people's hands like turn 15 plus in these series. Yeah. Uh, definitely at least three times, I have to say, which is way longer than normal. Well, um... This looks pretty grim for the rogue based on the number of cards he has left. If he could pop the ice block this turn, I would actually give him like a pretty good advantage, but he can't, so. Mm. Yeah, I can see just using the second flame strike here. Throwing down some minions, make your opponent deal with it. Could use the coin, get the acolyte out. Hey, that turn 15 coin value. <laughs> uh, Firebat is playing the Archmage in his deck, so he could also try to save the coin for Archmage, but it doesn't seem very useful. You're just wanting to stay alive here, so drawing actual cards is going to be more useful. Things that will help you live, like Ice Block. Do you know if uh, both Ice Berries have been used? Yeah, both Ice Berries have been used. Yeah. I think the Heal Bot was still in the deck, though. That's a good point. Oh, uh, finally, there's, Al there's uh, Archmage. So both Saps have been used, both of its rates. So if if Firebat just plants down this Archmage Antonice, maybe Ice Lances, the Shredder, this this Archmage Antonice might just like stay on the board, almost guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, there's one more oil, right? So it's like the answer. Seems like you could do you could kill it if you just Ice Lance the Shredder with a double Blade Flurry and South Sea Deckhand, which is a really weird play, but yeah. So it's. Important to note that Let Me Farm, he's uh, built up a lot of big weapons, but he hasn't been able to Blade Flurry them, which I feel like is kind of a huge weakness. Uh, since you, you basically do double the damage if you Blade Flurry your weapon. And there's been a lot of times this game where Let Me Farm, like there was a Doomsayer on board and Let Me Farm just let it do its thing. Whereas if you had a Blade Flurry, you'd, be able, you'd both be able to get the damage of your weapon onto your opponent's face as well as the Doomsayer. What's he doing? No, don't attack the scientist. Uh, he could have popped the ice block there. I mean, like, he wouldn't, he's not going to win anyways, even if he pops ice block here, but you could have used uh, Deckhand Oil Flurry to. Actually, I think just Deckhand Oil Attack would have done it. 
The one thing is leaving the scientist would mean the other ice block would be drawn, but of course Firebat had the ice block in his hand, so that wouldn't have drawn a secret at all. Kind of a hasty choice there. It is like a, a somewhat legit play, and I don't think it would matter in the end, but I personally would have popped the ice block if I had that opportunity. Just like see if he has Alex Raza in the bottom three cards of his deck for an easy win. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, is this an Archmage turn? I think it's a Healbot turn. Yeah, this is still pretty scary for Firebat. You don't know exactly what he has. You, you should know, actually. You should know. There's two preps, two flurries, and an oil. Yeah, so not very, not very threatening. Uh, uh, we we haven't seen Lothep at all, right? Oh yeah, it's really key. Lothep being the last, like, yeah, Firebat is basically thinking about how he can play around Lothep. He hasn't seen it yet, and he knows that it, like, because there's only one card left in. Um, let me farm stack. It's going to come down next turn. Yeah, unless let me farm cut it. But uh, we hadn't seen let me farm's rogue deck to completion before, so Firebat has no idea. If let me farm honestly cut Lothab and rogue, I have to have a little talk with him. <laughs> Let's find out. Oh, oh there yeah. it is. Yeah, there it is. Didn't really matter in this match. There wasn't a lot of points where Lothab was super significant, but it's always a card that you want to have just for that opportunity in this type of game. Oh, never lucky. <laughs> never lucky, Baby Rage. It's the non-active creature, meaning there's no way to kill the Archmage. Well, four cards left in Firebat's deck. You're hoping Alex Draza is among them. Okay. More fireballs for everyone. Is there any way Firebat could actually lose here? Just trades the Archmage on one, there's eight damage. Doesn't seem like it. The max damage that could be put out would be ten. He's actually going to trade for that instead of Lothab. Hey, you could know for sure. There's no way somebody's going to cut a prep or a flurry from their deck. So, 9 damage maximum. Plays Alex Straza. Does fireball both the creatures on the following turn. And then he wins. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, just being as absolutely safe as possible. Yep. Oh man. Okay. Being 100% safe. Well, if you guys watching ever wanted to know how to play Freeze Mage versus Rogue, I think you can definitely steal Firebat's strategy on this. He knows exactly that he does not have to kill the Rogue, unless there is some amazing opportunity where he has Alex Straza and all of his damage possible. He's yeah. just going to kill the creatures and run it to completion. Yeah, you know what? This uh, this matchup actually reminds me quite a lot of Freeze Mage versus Patron Warrior, where it's up to Patron Warrior to put out threats. That's up to Freeze Mage to deal with them oftentimes. And the one main difference is the armor mechanic. Yep. Um, not only does Warrior have armor smiths, but they have natural armor gain. Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, this was like textbook play from Firebat. I have to compliment him on that. There was absolutely no mistakes. We could see both hands and it was like each play was just picture perfect. I'm surprised that Let Me Farm is actually playing this out. Okay, there we go. Um, I will say that Let Me Farm has had a slightly uh, unfortunate draw, not get, lining up his weapons and blade flurries that well, for instance. Yeah, and the, the Lothab being so late, he might have chosen a clutch moment to... Um, Lotheb and prevent uh, AOE removal that would give him some kick on the board. 
Either way, it'll come down to Firebat's uh, aggressive hunter deck, which he's managed to lose three or four games in a row with so far. So it's uh, something that I'm sure he wants to win a game with finally and not get knocked out of the tournament yet. Yeah, it feels quite bad in the Conquest format when you just never lose with a single deck. I know it's happened quite a lot before. For instance, uh, Shoop, a player who often plays in our Geico tournaments, um, he... He was at Assembly recently, and he brought mid-range Paladin uh, to his lineup, which is mm. a, a, like a questionable decision, to say the least. Yeah. But he went 0-6 with that deck in the round of 16 at Assembly. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. I mean, the mid-range Paladin is like, technically pretty good on ladder, but so far, in every like recent tournament I've watched, I've seen Paladin get completely crushed, unless it's the Divine Favor style. So, well, All right. Um, Goodbye, Firebat. I don't know. If you look at this hand, for, like, yeah. I guess you keep all these cards. Oh my god! No, he didn't. He didn't really throw away SI agent, right? No, no. It's. I think it's the same bug, the same yeah. Mulligan bug. He did throw away deadly poison. I guess he just knows he has so much removal, anyways, with the backstab SI. He doesn't even need it. Yeah. He can even, yeah, he doesn't even have to combo the backstab and the SI. Oh, man. it's a good draw. I mean, like, despite having a hand that good, it's not as if it's an easy game for the rogue. The biggest thing is, like, his hand right now allows him to slow the hunter down, but it's not proactive in any way. He has to find his mechanics to attack the hunter still somewhere. Yeah. See, now they're... Now it gets a little difficult because you want to SI something, but it's not really efficient now. Yeah. Hmm. Firebat has a great turn, of course, with the Wolf Rider. And, uh, that will be pretty punishing. I think it's better just to wait and dagger up here, and then you'd SI agent the Wolf Rider next turn. Yeah, but also. Uh, the Firebat's uh, next turn actually could be Abusive Sergeant Steady Shot, which is pretty similar. Okay. Yeah, just fitting in those hero powers in. It's actually, I, I kind of like this better. Um, yep. Although, the, the one benefit of just throwing the Wolf Rider out there is it's less likely for the wolf fighter to, to just get poked down by the weapon. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the abusive sergeant, there's like, for hunter math, it can be really simple. So I'm sure a lot of viewers understand what happened there. But uh, when he plays the abusive sergeant, he adds um, one damage. Yeah, one extra damage. He's adding four damage immediately. And then there's one less attack for the next turn. So as soon as the rogue kills the creature with a way other than attacking, then it was better to play the abusive sergeant. Yeah. I think if you play the wolf fighter the last turn, it might have actually changed Let Me Farms play this turn. It's just psychologically, you're okay with um, hitting something that has two attack, but you feel much less okay hitting something with three attack. Yep. I often say uh, three attack is 50% better than two attack. So. A good it can point. be only one number, but it makes a big difference. Well, I mean, this, this doesn't feel very good, despite how nice his hand was on the opening. He's stuck with this SI agent, no combo. Um, he's at 18 on turn four, and he has no pressure on the hunter at all. Yeah, I, I might have uh, wanted Let Me Farm wow. to maybe think a bit more about... Basically, about... Like just using the backstab that early on without yeah. comboing with SI agent. Because he kind of just assumed that on turn two he'd be able to SI something down. But when you think about like the minions that Hunter can put down on turn two, Mad Scientist, I, that's a pretty good um, SI agent. Knife Juggler, I don't think Hunter will generally play that against you on turn two. And then you have the Haunted Creeper. So more often than not, it's going to be a Haunted Creeper. I would say like. 40% of the time it's going to be Haunted Creeper. And when you're face off with a Haunted Creeper on turn two, that turn's going to be pretty awkward. Then again, you have to like 
I have a trade off of if I don't use the backstab on turn one, then he's gonna get two da- extra damage to me. That was actually a like pretty bad turn for let me farm to heal bot there. It was on curve heal bot, so it looks great. But uh, eviscerate SI agent was a much better play. You put damage forward. You get to attack face with a violet teacher. It means your violet teacher is still at five health. You would clear the board. You would die to double kill command, and that would be the only thing that could kill you that turn. Uh, maybe like abusive sergeant quick shot kill command would also do it. But it was very unlikely he would actually die for six mana. And then he has not attacked the hunter at all now. He has this teacher that will die in a future trade. He's just never able to turn the board around. Holding on to that heal bot and getting the spells and combo mechanics going faster would have been much more powerful. Yeah, generally, like even in handlock, for instance, or especially in handlock, you want to use the heal bots as late as possible because you want to get your power out early and then heal. Just you, you want to live on the edge, essentially. Just heal at the last possible second so you don't just die. Yeah, so the hunter would be, uh, for example, he would have had to heal bot this turn, I guess, but the hunter would have taken five extra damage on the previous turn, which would have helped out a lot on the finisher. And then next turn, he would be able to kill. In this case, the hunter only needs to kill the heal bot to survive. And the teacher, of course, doesn't have five health. So, uh, you know, that turn was played really quickly, but that was kind of where the maximum decision in the matchup came from. Now here's the hunter's <laughs> ultimate decision. How much do I trade for? Ooh, nice. Wow. Does he get the final juggle too? Oh, oh my oh. god. Never lucky. Uh, Rogue is not dead, and technically he could still win. Hunter draws dead this turn. Um, Hunter's at 10. Hunter's at 9. Needs, uh, I'm actually be able to do it anyways. He does 3 plus SI agent. Offer. Oh, oh my god. Uh, it does. Let me farm had lethal next turn, actually, with dagger, uh, attack, flurry, and SI agent. That uh, The Huffer literally decided the entire game. The one in three <laughs> roll was the series. They were tied two to two. Let me farm. My heart breaks for you, man. You yeah. you actually had that one set up. and I mean, let, let me farm. Wow. Welcome to Hearthstone. Oh, man. That's just, uh, that's uh, really unfortunate. But Firebat, of course, played it well, and he was bound to take one of the wins with that Hunter eventually, right? So, yeah. Now the Hunter is only one and three, I believe, so it's not that poor. Uh, in this series, at least, it was one and two. And I think one he two. played twice. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was one and four then. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to take a short break, a very short break, and then we're going to have Firebat against uh, his next opponent, the lose, against Oskaka. So it's actually going to be a rematch of the first match. Um, before we uh, go on to the break, we want to give a little shout-out to Geico uh, for sponsoring this wonderful tournament. Geico, of course, uh, has wonderful insurance, and if you want to support Geico, please check them out at geico.com. O N O G dot G G at that website. You can also win a fantastic TSM PC. I've checked the specs. I'm actually looking to build a computer myself and they're actually just like top of the line. Basically everything you want out of um, a gaming PC. Um, I can just throw my uh, hat in here as well that when you go to sign up for the chance to win the PC, it will require you to sign up for a mailing list, but you can just sign up and immediately cancel it. So don't be scared off by that. And when you sign up for that, it shows Geico. That's how they um, analyze if these tournaments are getting attention. So you guys are watching, and they do get attention from it, but it's nice for us to be able to show and promote that eSports environment. It's really easy to do. You just sign up in a minute. Uh, also, there are open tournaments. Monk, maybe you know the dates for the next set of them, but really yes. great way to play for anyone who wants to get involved in the tournament scene. They're just completely open, and it's a great opportunity. 
Yeah. Uh, as for the open tournaments, um, we're hosting 16 open tournaments over the course of two to three months, and we're down to the final ones. There's actually only four open tournaments left. There's going to be two on August 10th and two on August 12th. So two on EU and two on NA. Uh, one on one on each server on each of those days. So be sure to check out liquidhearth.com for those open tournaments. So I think we're ready to take a short break. Players will be setting up for the next match, and our final deciding match will be Firebat versus Oskaka, which will happen in about just two minutes. See you then. 